Kicking uh, off with the obvious question, are you enjoying yourself so far this morning? I love these great big Comic Con ones because there's so much people watching to do, if you can call them people. I mean, there's there's sort of costumes and stuff to look at that's just so amazing, and they, there are always new things to see. And the only thing that's difficult is you're stuck at your table, so you can't get out and actually look around much and see. But a lot goes past you, so I love them. Of course, people love meeting you, I'm sure. Um, lots of lovely, excited Whovians. I'm curious, when they do meet you, what are the most common questions? What are the things people always find? Um, they at? always want to know what your favourite story is. They always want to know who your favourite monster is. I can't tell you how fed up I am with now saying Tom Baker every time. Um, and he, <laughs> um, yeah, and they often want your help as to which photograph to choose which I don't mind doing, but really they need to choose the one they want for themselves. Um, quite a few of the photographs I've got today are from a film I did called Vampire Circus, and so I get sort of Hammer Horror Film fans as well as Doctor Who fans, which makes a change. Um, yeah, that's mostly the sort of stuff they're asking. Um, picking up on Hammer, obviously that's um, another glorious legacy to be a part of, and what does it mean for you to be part of a very important piece of uh, cinema landscape. Well, it's odd because at the time doing it, one never had much idea of, of that. I didn't know anything about Hammer films. And Vampire Circus was a very odd, it was an oddity in the canon. I think it was very unlike most of the mm. Hammer films. And I don't think at the time anybody thought all that particularly much of it. But like a lot of things that don't do particularly well when they first come out, they become sleepers and they become cults later on, and as I understand it, Vampire Circus is one of those. But I loved it. It was the first job I got after leaving drama school, so I knew absolutely nothing about filming, and I was called every single day for six weeks on the shoot and learned so much from everybody. I loved it. When you think back on those kind of learning moments, the ones that stand out the most for you, and the particular lessons that you very clearly sort of remember picking up? Uh, I remember um, we all had to sit down and have a talk from Mary Chipperfield, whose circus it was that brought all the animals, and, and the, she said, um, you will find that the bars on the cages are very wide so that the cameras can shoot between them. Um, please do not go too close please do not attempt to do what somebody did on a shoot that they were on a few weeks before where a couple of the crew had had a bet that they could pull the whisker of one of the tigers without it waking up and he lost his arm. You know, those animals move so fast. So actually it was a thrill being around them and being able to look at them. Um, I learned more about what to do around wild animals, I think, than I ever learned to do about filming. But um, but you just got a chance to watch sort of really good actors working, and that's how you learn. And people were very kind. Robin Sachs, who played my brother and I, it was both for both of us, it was our first job. And Adrian Corrie, Thorley Walters, Lawrence Payne, all the other people in the film and the crew were incredibly kind and patient. And I think rather enjoyed having these two little newbies around to to tell them how to do stuff. So we were lucky, very lucky. I think obviously um, Doctor Who is unique amongst all of the franchises that are celebrated here and its longevity um, and the way it seems to continually be evolving for new generations. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you have a chance to watch any of our most recent Doctor's work and how you think about any of that. I haven't really. Um, it sounds terrible to say, having been in it, but I'm not a huge science fiction fan. I slightly understand better now why science fiction is important. Working with Douglas Adams, I mean, Douglas was incredibly science literate. And he and my almost now ex-husband, but who I love and adore, Richard Dawkins, sort of both, and actually it's Douglas who introduced Richard, both of them explained that science fiction is a great place in which to do thought experiments. And if you understand real science and you simply fiddle with one bit of it, you don't just come up with some totally abstractly impossible idea. You just change something in the way of the laws of physics, like there's no gravity or time is different or, or something like that. Then you can run a thought experiment on what would science be like in that world if that one thing was changed or a couple of things were changed. So in fact, science fiction, I think, is educational. And I think it's really interesting. And, and the great 
masters of it, the Arthur C. Clarks and people really understood that. Um, so I'm sort of sad that I don't, in fact, watch much of it, actually. And I haven't seen any of the, the newer Doctors, mainly because I actually don't know how to watch television anymore. I've got this unbelievably complicated <laughs> setup at home where, where I can watch Netflix and, and all those other things and watch movies. And I can even do DVDs. But getting BBC One, Two or Three and the sort of basic channels, I now find more or less beyond me. And I, I kind of slightly hanker for the old days where you just pressed a button on the actual machine and you got the program <laughs> you wanted to watch because I don't know how to do it now. So going back to Doctor Who, uh, I know you've been uh, getting involved with some of the Big Finish audios. Yes, I love doing them. <laughs> Can you talk about um, some of what's upcoming with that? Um, with, I know you've been recording with um, Tom Baker. Um, yes. Can you talk about that a bit more about um, I'm never allowed to talk about what's coming up because we signed this agreement not to divulge what the stories are going to be about and, and end up with sort of spoilers for people. And they film so film, they record so far in advance that I'm never quite sure until fans come up and tell me or they don't tell me <laughs> what they're actually listening to at the moment because it might be something that I recorded over a year ago. So you begin to. Um, it's a bit like fans coming up and saying, what was it like doing Destiny of the Daleks? Well, this is now about 40 years ago. And, I, and I, I've got a really good line now. I say, well, I love doing it. You tell me what you felt about the programme. <laughs> you tell me about the storyline, because I'm thinking, I don't know, I can't remember anymore. Um, I love doing the, the Big Finish stories. I think it's wonderful that they, they've developed our characters, that we can go on and become things like, in my case, President of Gallifrey, which I would never have done in the television. So it's really nice to be able to, to, to move on with the character. But also, the thing I love most is that you get to work with members of the cast who you've never worked with. I meet them on these conventions. I meet people like Louise Jameson and Colin Baker and so on. But Big Finish gives me a chance actually to work with them. So the business of um, moving around the characters and, and reconfiguring the interactions between people is, is wonderful on Big Finish. So one of my favourite episodes is Doctor Who City of Death. Yes. How much fun was it to shoot in Paris? It was uh, pure hell from beginning to end. There was no fun about it. We had a we had I mean Paris is a gorgeous city, but I tell you what, this was no way to see Paris. It was we were literally running from location to location. We had so little time. I can't remember how many actual minutes of cut film there are was got out of those three days or whatever it is we were there. But on a feature film, you'd be jolly lucky if you got about a minute and a half out of that. We got something like 20 minutes, I think. And it was the most chaotic schedule. Tom's got legs about five miles longer than mine. So running down those streets, you know, I was constantly, I looked like a little sort of pony trotting after him all the way through it. Um, there was no time to do anything at all. There was no time even to eat. I mean, you're in the city with some of the best places to eat in the whole world, and you're back in your hotel getting a bit of room service if you're lucky. It was a, it was, I've often thought that if you have a lovely time while you're filming, it doesn't necessarily mean that the end product is going to be that good. Conversely, and it's often the case, if you've had an absolutely awful time in the filming, Often the end result is fantastic. And the result, the point of it is that the program, when it's done, is worth watching. The point is not that I had a good time in Paris. So I'm, in, in many ways, I often kind of rather hope it's not going to be that great because I think the likelihood then is that what you achieved is good. It's just getting there is, is quite hard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.